Hello and welcome to another Artist Gang Tuesday with Donna Downey Studios. My name is Nicole Watson and this week I'm turning Donna's Lotus Pod Stencil into a butterfly. Grab a canvas or your art journal and join me! The first step of the process is to build the background layer using ephemera, book text, and even some pattern tissue. You'll want to spread a coat of matte medium on the back and the front of each paper, and don't forget to add some ephemera to the sides as well. I also added some of this tape from the local hardware store to add some texture in different places on the front of my canvas. Next I added gesso in between all the different pieces of ephemera to kind of smooth it out, bring them together, and cover up some of the edges so that the papers looked a little bit more natural and not so chopped up on the front of the canvas. For the next layer of the background, I'm going to use some carbon black acrylic paint here with a makeup sponge and just choose some little parts of each of the stencils to add some interest to the background. So I'm first I'm going to use the numbers and then I'm going to use um, a scribbly one which I think is fun because it ends up looking like some of the lines in the butterfly. And then I'll use a chicken wire one and then also a flower one, which I forgot to record, but you'll see the flowers pop in there as well towards the end. And just like the ephemera, don't forget to add a little bit of your stenciling to the edges of your canvas. Once your layers are dry, it's time to add our butterfly wings using the Lotus Pod stencil. The first time I saw this stencil, I immediately thought that it would make the perfect wings for a butterfly, so that's what I wanted to do on this canvas. You'll first um, stencil this top part of your wing and then move the stencil down and stencil the bottom part of the wing. When I stenciled the bottom part, I didn't um, use all of the spots because I didn't want the wings to look exactly alike and then later I decide that it needs a few spots so I do add some spots towards the front of the wing and you'll see that a little bit um, down the way in the tutorial. So then I wanted to add the other wings on the other side of the butterfly but I wasn't ready to commit to its body yet so I sketched in a body with a charcoal pencil knowing that I could erase it later if I wanted to change the shape and added the wings on the left side of the butterfly using the same stencil. I also extended the left side wings on the edge of the canvas and then I used the same black paint and officially painted in the body and also touched up some areas where the stencil didn't um, come in clear or joined some of the lines and made some of the spots a little bit more defined in areas that I didn't get it stenciled as well. Now I'm adding color to the wings. I'm using a combination of all these paints, a little bit of retarder, and I also added some white gesso to my pile as well. And I just used my finger and a paintbrush and put in paint here and there. I didn't really have any um, goal in mind other than just filling the wings up with like splotchy kind of fun colored because butterfly wings tend to be kind of splotchy or textured here and there. So I just wanted it to look kind of fun, whimsical, and a little splotchy. I also used this Dino Wakely tool to carve into my paint a little bit to kind of maybe make some of the um, veining and lines that butterflies have as well. And I just continued to use all of those colors and filled in the wings on the left and the right. Mm -hmm. 
Once I was kind of happy with how the wings were looking, I used the back end of my paintbrush and added these white dots here and there to add some more fun to the wings. Then I grabbed the teal and also some more retarder and gesso to make the background. Now this point is when you'll have to be okay with letting go of even more of that background, but you'll also see some of the background through the teal. So your first layer will add some interest and then your teal is going to cover it up to add a fun um, color to your background. And I just used my finger and spread it around on the canvas and also the edges. So here's where I decided that that wing needed just a few more spots. So I actually flipped the stencil around and used those um, spots, just a few in that area. And I also added them to the left side. Then I picked up this fine liner, which is full of that same carbon black, a little bit of water and a little bit of airbrush medium and traced around the wings, giving them a little bit more sketchy look so that it wasn't such a solid black. And I will pick up this fine liner several times to define these lines as they become muddled here and there. So then it was time to fill in that body. I didn't want the black to um, overpower all of the ephemera behind so I did add a little bit of water to it so it wasn't as dark and then I grabbed some rub-ons and added some of those here and there to the front of the canvas as well. So at this point I wasn't exactly sure what to do so um, this is actually the next day. Before I went to bed that evening, I made a list of possible ideas of what I wanted to do and woke up the next morning and decided to um, add some more white spots here and there and then grab that butterfly washi tape and add um, some little butterflies strategically here and there on the front of the canvas to add some more interest. And once I put those down, I did grab a little bit of, um, of the teal paint and gesso and kind of disguised the edges so they didn't look like they were just sitting on top of the canvas. Um, before I did the paint, I did add a little bit of matte medium to make sure that that washi tape was secure to the front. And then I decided that I wanted to add a little bit of the teal um, in the actual butterfly itself. So I kind of used it as a shadow underneath the wings and in different places. Then I found this fine liner that I had already filled with a yellow color paint. I have no idea what color yellow it was, but thought it would be perfect to trace around those spots on the butterfly wing and that added a lot more interest and a lot more depth to my front. I also traced around the wings itself and then I actually did a little image search for butterflies because I wanted to do something to that body to make it look not so solid black and saw that some butterflies had stripes and spots on their bodies and so I decided to do that with the yellow and I also do it with the white coming up as well. Um, my butterfly wings were getting a little muddled and also those numbers on the front of my canvas so I just took the black and went over those numbers a little bit. I added a couple more numbers because I thought it needed more. Here I picked up the white that I spoke about earlier and added some white lines and also some little dots. The fine liner is perfect to make little dots. So I also made little dots with the yellow one that you can see there as well. I also added some little white dots to the wings itself with that fine liner and decided that I needed to bring a little bit more of that teal into the wings. So just splashed some teal on the wings and also the body for a little bit more interest and wiped away any of the splashes that I didn't like. And then it was time to be brave and draw the antenna. And I grabbed a charcoal pencil again to sketch it out, erase it when I didn't like it, and then I used the fine liner to draw in those antenna officially. <laughs> and here I am tracing around again with the fine liner. Like I said, I did this several times as those little lines disappeared and to add it more sketchy. And I do did draw some lines also with the black on the body to add a little bit more interest. And then to make those spots pop even more, I did add some white here and I found that I really liked that but didn't want to overdo it. So I just traced a couple of the spots with white. So then I wanted to add a fun saying to the front, this all good things are wild and free sentiment from Donna's Unity Stamps uh, Wild and Free um, stamp set really spoke to me and I put that on the front. I used matte medium but, um, on the front and on the back of the cardstock 
And then um, I used some of this Distress ink to grunge up the edges a little bit and also grunge up the edges of my cardstock saying. And Distress ink is water soluble so if you do put this on your canvas make sure that you spray the edges otherwise it will all disappear. And the other good thing about that is if you get too much like I did um, you can wipe it away with a baby wipe. And then I traced um, around my words with that fine liner again to make them pop. And I decided that my lines weren't sketchy enough around my butterfly, so I took the fine liner and squiggled it a little bit, and then I added some orange splatter around my canvas, and I called it done. Thank you so much for watching. Please share what you are inspired to create with Donna's stencils over in her Facebook group. The link will be in the description box below. Thank you.